I began our prayer thinking about using El Kalum. Welcome back to part three of Latu and the Succubus Name Keisha. Part two is on Patreon for free. All you have to do is sign up to the membership and you'll have access to the videos. So in part two and part one, I was very much amped up when I was speaking about Alatu and his succubus because I had a big re revelation and a lot of things had happened, you know, as I was speaking about before that I kept having to record the video because the entity kept attacking. Um, well, trying to attack, should I say. And I, this is my second time recording this. I erased it because I had a new way that I wanted to approach this. I recorded this yesterday, but it had started to get dark. And as it started to get dark, my internet went out again. And so, I, and I actually said that in the, in the last video, but I erased it and I'm starting over because I had a whole new revelation after the last shadow hour. So yesterday when I recorded this, it was October 2nd, which was the solar eclipse and um, the new moon and all these other things, right? So, a lot of downloads came to me during that time. And at some point, I also had become very emotional again. <laughs> um, because all I can say is like, when you have released an entity that has been plaguing you and your family or attaching itself or trying to attach itself to you and your family for years, and you finally feel the release of it, it can feel emotional. You can feel a lot of different emotions. You can feel, you know, sad that this entity attached to people that you once cared about or that you care about. Um, you can feel happy that the entity is finally gone, that it's finally, you know, it has no more effect on you because this entity, so I'm going to get into that. Um, this entity is not, a bunch of entities is one entity that uses different forms to attach to you or to track you down or whatever right so whatever the case may be I just wanted to kind of like give you the you know the thought process behind me doing a third video because I pretty much covered mostly everything in the first two videos about like you know is because if I can go on and on and on about things that happened between Alatu and Keisha that should have been context clues for Alatu as to who Keisha was and who her family was. But Alatu just was not aware. You know, for a long time, Alatu didn't even know what a succubus or incubus was. Because back in our day, they used to call it sleep paralysis. Um, But that was just... And people still right now to this day try to pretend like sleep paralysis is not just that. Like sometimes people can't see the entity that's on them. But you know you can feel it on your chest. Um, You you know that you are trying to speak and you can't. You know some people with the, the attack is a little bit more vicious. Um, Like okay. So for example I was speaking about at times when, when Alatu was at Keisha's house. And, you know, a lot of Keisha was like basically sucking the energy out of a lot to like literally and figuratively. So a lot to had seen this entity like not in a dream. A lot to never seen this entity in a dream. A lot to have seen this entity face on like wide awake. OK, and so this is not something that. Somebody can say to a lot, like, oh, no, you just drank that. That didn't really happen. Like, no. A lot too saw this entity while she was wide awake. And it was the same entity that Shu, her son, described to her that attacked him in his sleep. It was the exact same entity with the red eyes and all. Like, it was the exact same entity. So, she knew that she wasn't lying. That's why she packed her stuff up and got the fuck on as quick as she did. Because she knew that this was the same entity. And now, it wasn't no mistaking it was no mistaken for her that this entity was attached to Keisha because this was the same entity that she saw with her own two eyes wide awake. So whatever the case may be, um, this entity was sucking a lot too dry. Like I'm not, I cannot make this shit up. A lot too 
I wish I could insert pictures to show you all. Alatu's ass had started like like sinking in. She had bags of bags around her ass, and Alatu was able to replenish her own energy. Alatu was not an energy vampire, so Alatu had ways that she refilled her own cup, that she refilled her own energy, or you know, boost her own energy back up. So Alatu would do her what she do to boost herself back up, and then this entity, this demon, would come and suck her for like three or four hours straight. And just to show you, like. How real this shit is. Think, just really think about this. Because I, I swear, the most has my witness, I'm not making this up. It would literally be three or four hours. Who does that? Who, who else could do that besides a demon? Could just literally suck you. Think about yourself. If you're giving somebody oral pleasure, have you ever in your life did that for three or four hours straight? Have you, like, really think about that. And it's like I say, I know it, it's, it's, it's so outlandish that it's so outrageous that it sounds outlandish. It sounds like it's not true. Like, ain't no way. I kid you not. It would start, like, about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. It would not end to, like, 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning. Like, this is no joke. Like, she was literally sucking the life out of Olatu. A lot too would be trans in this too. Like, would not even realize that that much time had went back. And it was a lot of other things that was happening in Keisha's home. You know, that when a lot too got, to, got there, started being exposed. And, and, and a lot, and these things were signals to a lot too. It was like literally, like, even the candles was like trying to send them smoke like was trying to send a lot to smoke signals so um every time they tried to do some type of candle work which a lot to have never had issues with doing candle work never like never ever dressing them and uh, like with it, no matter what she do like a lot to had left candles burning at somebody else's house for like three days and would come back and the candle would still be burning because the person didn't want to touch it because she had told the person that it was like Hey, this is an altar I'm putting here for protection for this home and, th and things like that, whatever. So the person never touched it. And the candle, when the lots would come back, the candle would still be there burning. So why the hell, when she goes to Keisha's house, this can't, like, it's starting to study things, just study happening with these candles. One particular situation, it happened twice. They burn a candle, and the candle start blowing, blowing rings. Like rings start, like circle, like smoke rings start coming from the uh, candle. No bullshit. Alatu had never seen it before. Like, what the hell? And then Alatu looks it up and it's like basically saying like, oh, these your ancestors. Then you know that they're around protecting you. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, Alatu never, um, that never happened with Alatu. And Alatu work with candles a lot. So this was like, what the, What? Also, too, when Alatu was asleep, on shadow hours that, that Alatu and Keisha did not engage in intimacy, Alatu would wake up with scratches all on her chest, chest and arms. And Alatu would jokingly say, because Alatu still wasn't putting two and two together at this point, Alatu would jokingly say, what the hell are you doing to me in my sleep? But she jokingly said, this is something subconscious coming from a lot to let, it should be letting a lot to know, like, yeah, something's going on. But again, a lot to is not wanting to believe that Keisha is on this with her. No, Keisha, no, love wouldn't disrespect. Yes, the fuck love would. Biggie said this in the song, no, love wouldn't disrespect. And one of, one of my favorite songs by Biggie is Warning. Okay, and in this song, Biggie say, nah, love wasn't this, when they was telling him, like, yeah, they send doing this, blah, 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 Biggie like, nah, nah, love, love wasn't disrespect. At the time, not realizing that love is Diddy, <laughs> okay? Not even realizing all the way back then that that's who uh, love was. So this just goes to show you, like, the, these entities is real out here. It's real, and these entities are all connected. So, I'm going to get to that, right? Let me get to that now, actually. So, in part two, well, I don't know, in one of the parts, I basically explained that um, Keisha was a cambion. So, a cambion is basically like a baby de demon that's like born a demon, right? So, or got demonic spirits or, or entities within them. 
Keisha was born this way. And I'm not sure if Tina was as well, but Keisha was born this way. And Keisha fed this this entity within her until it grew into a full-fledged succubus. Okay? Now, she did this and then she wanted to get it off her because at some point she probably realized that this entity was also like if she didn't feed it it would suck her so she had to feed it or else it was going or else it was going to suck her energy and i feel like that was the same thing with tina at some point in her life she probably realized that if she didn't do certain things that she was she like a lot of times we may not know like consciously what something is our subconscious may know our guys our spirit guys the spirit team may know and may be trying to warn us and tell us and pull us away from things and things like that but we may not actually really know we may not know the terms of things we may not know like how something operate or exactly what it is and a lot of times these entities will try to keep you from knowing what it is so at the same time you know you're feeding this entity and your guys may be trying to lead you to starve it. Because that is one of the things. Like, when it comes down to these these incubus and succubus, they can become very powerful, especially if you're feeding it a lot. Don't be out here being like a ho-ho, ho-ho-ho-ho-ho. Like, yeah, you feeding it, it's going to get strong, and it can overtake you and be controlling you as well. You out here doing shit and don't even know why you're doing You out here fucking people and don't even know why you fucking them. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the... <laughs> Why did I do that? You don't even know that this entity led you to it because it was hungry. Okay? So, at some point, a lot to, like, okay, so, you know, in, in one of these, um, not in this series, but in the series before, I spoke about a lot to being celibate for a couple years. Like, this was after she dealt with Rashid. A part of this was she was just so hurt by Rashid lying to her. Like, she really trusted him. And so she was just like, you know what? I just, I'm not giving my goodies to nobody until I could just fully trust you. Okay, boom. So she hit like this age where she was like, okay, this is what I'm doing. But at the same time too, what a lot did not know was in that process, when she stopped giving her goodies out, a lot to start feeding the entity herself by masturbating. She started, like I said, a lot to have become addicted to it. She was doing it like three times a day. Now, granted, she learned a lot about herself in this process, but she also was feeding a demon that she was supposed to be starving. So, yeah, she may not have been feeding it outside sources, but she was feeding it herself. Okay? Now, what I was saying about this, these entities being connected, we got to realize, especially within our own communities, that... This entity was not something, this demon was not something that was inherently on us. Now, I'm not trying to offend any of my audience that is of um, Caucasoid race. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to offend anybody, but facts are facts, okay? This entity was not an entity that was inherently on us or attached to us. This entity was placed on us during slavery via S.A. and Grape. Now, y'all know I can't say the word on YouTube. They be tripping, but that's what it was. They were destiny swapping us back then because that's what these these entities do. They, they suck your energy so that you're not fulfilling your destiny, your, your birthright. They're basically trying to suck your birthright out of you, and it doesn't work. It, okay, I'm going to say it had been working because we were not aware. But now these, dem these demons, these entities are being exposed, and so... Now, a lot of us are becoming aware like this, like some of these things that I'm, that I'm telling you guys now, some of the stuff I knew, but some of this stuff I'm really like, since I have released, um, this demon over the last couple of days, like the demon keep, like I say, because it's not okay. Energy, these demons and entities and spirits, they're energy, right? Just like we are energy does not die. So the energy is not dead. You can only transform it or transmute it. You know what I'm saying? It's not It's not going to die. You know what I'm saying? So the entity is still around, but it just has no bearing on my life or my family life because I have cast that demon away. At the same time, too, like I say again, it's, it's almost kind of like, for, for a good way for me to explain it, 
I put this demon into a, 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 a prison and it can see me, but it can't touch me type shit. Right. So, um, that's what I was saying though. Like this is something that was placed on us for a long time. Like this has been going on for generation through generation through generation. A lot of our melanated beings have this entity on them and don't realize or it's following them and they don't realize like some people are they, they spirit team they guys are protecting them so it may have been like this close to touching you but ne maybe not necessarily attached to you in that way where it's sucking you and using you to suck other maybe you didn't feed it you know what i'm saying so it's not attached to you in that type of way at the same time too is some of us some of our people that did feed this entity like this is where you get so much molestation and rape and things like that in our community i can like i honestly can say to you and this is real shit i know this is not true for every single woman in the world and every like i don't know every single woman in the world whatever but i'm just being straight up a honey with you almost i'm gonna say 90 about 95 percent of the women that i know and this, and, and I know quite a few women. I'm talking about women that I know personally, women that I have met online or whatever. 95% of the women that I know that's melanated, I'm speaking on. 95% of these women have been essayed or great. I, I guess that's the way you got to say it on YouTube now. But you get what I'm saying. Like this has happened to like, like I kid you not, I'm not making this up. And again, I'm only speaking from the women that I know. I'm not saying that it's that like speaking worldwide and this is what happened but i'm saying out of most of the women that i know and i'm talking about a, a good vast majority most of them have been essayed touched when they were children or great okay this is not some number i'm making up or i'm just saying like i kid you not it's sad to talk to so many women and they have had this experience why because a lot of the men that that's in their families because a, a lot of people a lot of these days these men try to make women feel a certain way and say oh well you got to choose better than the third a lot of this have happened by their own family members so they chose that we chose that because like i'm telling you it happens and it's because of this entity that was placed on our people and so now we come into a space where these entities are are becoming weaker and weaker. That's why you like what you seeing, like with the Diddy and all this stuff. This stuff is like a distraction. What you seeing is an attack on these demonic spirits and entities to leave us the fuck alone, to get the fuck on, so we can step into our birthright, so we can get away from those attacks. This is why those who don't want to to. Um, exercise those demons within themselves that's why they going down those who still want to participate in, in those demonic actions who not for a lack of a better way to put it who are not repenting who are not saying you know what this is not right let me stop doing this let me make these things right let me they are being they are these they're being cast out of society so to speak we seeing this on a larger scale but we don't recognize what we're seeing this is why so many women feel vindicated so many women feel like oh yes thank you finally because so many of our melanated sisters have experienced this and when we and when we're speaking up on it we're being made to feel like something is wrong with us or we call this upon ourselves no none of this even with the the men it wasn't called upon these men these men were attacked as well you don't think that these that these some of these things that happened to these men it absolutely did and they projected it because of their own pain, their own insecurities, their own, their own, their own demons. They they put it on the people that was closest to them, their women and their children. I could not tell you how many fathers have done this, how many uncles have done this, how many big brothers and big cousins have done this. It happens to them, and then they do it to somebody else. It happens all like we talk about this. In our community on a, on a, like a smaller scale, like, oh, well, you know, this person, yeah, this must happen to them. But no, it's deeper than just this one person that happens to this one person. This entity is one entity split out amongst a bunch. It travels. But it's one entity. It's, it's really one incubus. What should I say? It's one succubus that created a bunch of more succubus and incubus in other forms like it shape shifts into other forms but it's still one entity 
This is why you can get rid of one and you think, oh, I'm done with that. I'm done with this. And then another one pop back up in your life. It's the same entity. It just changed form so you wouldn't recognize it. That's all. The same thing, like I said, like with Keisha being born at one of these spirits. This was a, a manifestation. I didn't say something else too, right? So when Alatu had went back and she was at Keisha's house, she was trying to see Tina because she had not seen Tina in a long time, like in years. So she was like, you know, what's up? Like, I wanted to see her and just say hi, let her meet my children and stuff like that. Again, because this is when Alatu was not aware what was going on with them. Every time that she would try to meet up with Tina, something would come up. Oh, Tina don't feel like being bothered or she ain't feeling well right now. It was always something. Keep in mind, I told you that Tina had entities following her around, coming up out the walls, out the floor. And they would shadow people, according to her. It was basically shadows, like, like, can I make this shit up? It was shadows coming up out the walls, out of everywhere she go. She goes to the store, she at the bank, she anywhere. These entities was following her, not leaving her alone. Why? As I said before, it was her own demons that she did not face. It was all of the, the entities, the beings that she hurt. So you got to realize, like, she was older. A lot of these people that she had done things to probably had transcended. They was probably in the spirit realm. Like, yeah, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> like, for real. Not say like that, but like, for real. For real. This, this entity, like I say, like, we talk about, like, people say, oh, karma not real. And this and the third. Like, that's bullshit. I don't care. Like, people could say karma not real because they don't understand what karma is. And they don't, they don't like the fact of something coming back toward them. If somebody can sit up here, I hear the same people that say, oh, I don't believe in karma. But they'll say things like, you reap what you sow. What goes around, come around. Oh, it's cause and effect. These are all the same way. These are all different forms of saying karma. You just don't like the word karma, fine. Say it however you want to say it, but either way it go, you know in, intuitively, you know that what goes around, come around. You know what you put out, put out you're going to get back. This is why... I don't understand why some witches or people that deal in Wicca or whatever, um, or even those who deal in like voodoo or hoodoo or whatever. I sometimes I don't understand why they do certain things because whatever energy you put out is going to come back threefold. This is one of the rules of, of doing magic. One of the first rules, whatever you put out, is going to come back. So make sure your intentions are pure. Everybody is a witch, my dude. If you really want to be technical, whether it's W-I-T-C-H or W-H-I-C-H. It's still which it's both both of my choice you cast the spells every day it's just what are you choosing now i'm not saying everybody a witch in the sense of like you know you know wicca and that type of thing what i what i mean by which is because everybody is not like a practicing witch like to that degree where they practicing and like they actually sit down doing certain things but we all do do certain rituals and do certain things that help us manifest things in our life be it through you praying or whatever all of these are rituals when you saying things oh you know what i'm saying like you wishing people well or i'm gonna pray for you and I was, that's ritualistic that's you practicing magic you you practicing you manifesting something again but I know people don't like certain terms because certain negative connotations are attached to them. I, I personally wouldn't want to be called a witch either. I get it. But if we're going to be on some technical stuff and we're talking about etymologically speaking or phonetically, not etymologically, not etymologically, but phonetically speaking, phonetically speaking, which is the same, which in which W-H-I-C-H and W-I-T-C-H is the same thing. It's basically you making a choice. When you are a witch, you choose to do good things or bad things, agreeable things, disagreeable things, negative things, negative things or positive things. You're choosing. It's a choice. The same way W-H-I-C-H is a choice. It's, it's the same thing, but they trick you because this English language is a bastard language that is, is used, to, is, is made to confuse you. It's made to throw you off, to make you think that certain things are not what they are. It, it is they use certain words, and you attach and attach well, you attach certain emotions to those words that have you casting spells on yourself that you don't want. 
But that's a whole nother conversation because we talking about these succubus and these incubus right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My bad. Like, I got up on attention because this, like, I think I need y'all to understand how powerful it is to really get the how how powerful and how how much of a, a relief it feels to get these entities up off you to get them up off your bloodline your bloodline would think you would feel the release of the weight on your shoulder i remember it was a point in time where i used to feel like something would be sitting on my shoulders like literally i used to i, I was t having this conversation with somebody like a few years ago and i was saying like it like sometimes like you may a person may see me like kind of slump my shoulder my shoulders would be hurting and sore and one day I was talking to my now I was saying I was like you know what like it's hard to explain but like sometimes it be feeling like something that was like sitting on my shoulders you know what I'm saying so when I tell you to not feel that it's a relief you feel like crying you feel like singing you feel like dancing you feel like laughing because you know that it's that it cannot affect you no more I'm giving you the history of the, like, where it came from, but that's not even the most important part. The most important part is for you to stop feeding it. Because once you stop feeding it, you make it weak. And and then, and only then, can you cast it out. Can you cast it away? Because as long as it's strong and it's stronger than you, then you're not going to be able to get rid of it. Because every time you try to, it's going to resist and you're going to be out here doing things and, and you know, let me back up. Let me not tell you what you can and you can't do. Because you can do whatever your mind, put, whatever you put your mind to. If you say, I can cast this out right now, and I ain't got to do no extra, I can cast this out right now, then you can do that. But for those of us who it may have been following for a long time, and we don't know how to cast it out, or and it's, it's just really strong, and we don't know how to, you know, how to put up our psychic defenses to to weaken it enough for us to like basically attack um i'm telling you how you do that starve it but you first gotta know what the entity is because like some of us had different demons but right now we talking about succubus and incubus i go into different um uh, entities because they all entities right it's all entities it's all energy that's what it is it's energy and just a di in a certain form right in a spiritual form it's it's, it's an entity this particular entity feeds off of your lower vibrations, your lower um, frequencies, in particular lust. So you starve it by not giving in to those lustful desires. Celibacy. That's why, you know, it was like people may have thought it was like a trend. And it was, I guess, kind of a trend. But it was a point in time where you was hearing so many women say, I'm celibate. I'm celibate. I'm saying men was like making fun of it. Like I hear men make, oh, she's celibate now. She been, she been a whole, her whole life. Like you don't even know why, you don't even know why she been moving like that. Cause she had an entity attached to her. She was touched when she was a child and this entity followed her through her life. So when she, her t a teenager, she out here moving in a promiscuous way and you like, oh, was she just a hoe? Nah, she had an entity attached to her. And then at some point, something within her told her, be celibate. Stop. Because that it, that was her guides, whether she knew it or not, that was her guides telling her, stop feeding this entity so we, so we can get rid of it. Stop feeding it. And you would hear women say, I'm being celibate till I find my husband. Because that was something within them. That was their guides within them telling them, you get rid of this entity, you will attract the person for you. But you got rid of this, you, you're like, the person that you want in your life, it's not going to be attracted to that demonic spirit that's attached to you. You got to get rid of it first. I'm telling you, like, the things be, it be so much more deeper than we want to give credit to, than we want to say. You know what I'm saying? These entities, like, when you stop feeding them, they get weak. And they will try to fight you. They will try to convince you to, to feed it. They'll send things your way. They'll come in forms like this entity been with you for, for how many years? It know what you like. It know what gets you going. It know what makes you tick. It's going to send you exactly that. Oh, you like chocolate men? Okay, I'm going to send you a chocolate man. Oh, you like men that do this type of thing, A, B, C, and D? I'm going to send you that man that do this. I'm a, it's basically going to get into whatever form it needs to get into to get you to feed it. 
it reminds me of um, Little Shop of Horror. Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I know they just told my age. If you ain't, if you, if you like less than uh, 35, you don't even know what I'm talking about. But yeah, feed me, Seymour. That's what it's saying. Feed me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that it may be a difficult thing to do because. Again, it's something that you have been conditioned and have been doing your whole life. But I'm telling you, it's, it's necessary, it's needed, you must do it. Stop feeding it. And once it's weak enough, cast it out. You cast it out by your chance, by your affirmations. You like I'm I'm not gonna give you affirmation on here, but I will leave a link to someone who have a powerful affirmation. I will put it in in, in a um in the description box of this video. But someone who has her name is Mama T, and she has a powerful affirmation that she shared that will help you cast it out. Because that's what it needs to be. But you but you really do need to weaken it first. As long as you feeding it, it's going to remain stronger. You're going to be you're going to probably keep battling it. Let that like weaken it, and then cast it out. Speak your words, speak it and mean it. And also know, like, don't, don't be looking for it after you cast it out. Don't be looking for it because it, cause it, it's still around. You just can't feed it. That means after you cast it out, don't go back to doing the same shit you was doing because it, it could come right back. You got to make it stay gone by not feeding the energy that created it in the first place, which is those, those lower vibrational, lustful feelings emotions that energy in motion you've been feeding it for years stop feeding it starve it that's how you make it weak think about your own in a, in a human form if you starve yourself you start to get weak and once you're weak you easy to attack it's the same thing it's we all energy it ain't no different do it the same way I promise you, you will thank yourself for it. Your ancestors will thank you for it. Your life will start to improve. Things will start to move in a more positive direction. You will feel stronger. So then when it come back around, or because, like I say, it do come, it, it'll still try you in different forms, but it will not have a bearing on you. And once it come back around, you will feel strong enough to be like, get the fuck on and say it with your chest. You feel me? Peace. Yes, 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 yes,